Hello, everybody. Chris Gethin here. Welcome to another episode of the Knowledge and Mileage podcast. So today is a very special episode. I am recording this from London. So if you do hear a little bit of noise in the background, some peeping horns or sirens or anything like that, it's okay. This podcast is actually being recorded from a hotel lobby. And that is with my special guest, Tim Gray. But before we go into that podcast, I just want to remind you guys about my health and fitness and bodybuilding and biohacking retreat. This is the world's first bodybuilding and biohacking retreat that I'll be hosting the 9th to the 13th of October in beautiful Sun Valley, Idaho. Very low EMF up there, very clean air, and it's the perfect environment to transform your lives. I'm going to be putting you through in a total of six seminars there. I'll also be putting you through workouts, guiding your workouts. As a lot of you have asked me for personal training, so this is your opportunity to get me to actually train you over that duration. This is an all-inclusive retreats as well your food your coffee nothing but the best will be delivered to you and of course included in that is your stay at the beautiful limelight hotel and will be training at the zenergy health club and spa absolutely phenomenal place with a beautiful outdoor pool overlooking the mountains indoor pool Himalayan salt sauna, and you'll get a complimentary massage there as well. So please check out the link in my show notes for the itinerary and to sign up for that health and fitness and bodybuilding and biohacking retreat. And if you do like this podcast, guys, please tell a friend and leave a review. But one thing I do want to introduce to you as well is my new podcast partner, Juve. They're not too new to me, though. I'm sure you would have seen over the past year on my socials that I've been using this Juve infrared panel. And I also have what's called the Juve Go, which you would have seen me recently when I was in the UK and in India traveling about, not getting as much sun as I would have liked to. So I used then this biohacking method of the actual red infrared light uh, therapy. What I have found is that it reinforces a wide ranging and clinically proven benefits. Personally, I found faster muscle recovery, reduced pain and inflammation, and interestingly enough, an increase in testosterone production. So I have my big juve panel at my treadmill desk. And yes, I do have that bad boy shining on my balls, you know. It's kind of like a modular Lego block design, which allows you to build out the full body system. Um, so you could have the panels to your front, to your back, to your side. I have it just on my front, and then I will just do 10 minutes there and then change it onto my back, and maybe I'll do 10 minutes on my face because it does help with the assistance of collagen production as well so I can have younger, beautiful-looking skin. Anyway, if you would like to receive a free gift when you purchase these Juve panels, okay, head to Juve, that is spelt J-O-O-V.com forward slash Chris. So when you use the referral code Chris, you will receive a free gift with that purchase. But anyway, let's get straight into the show here. And we are going to be speaking to Tim Gray today who is the host, who is the organizer, who is holding the health optimization exhibition uh, that's going to be held at the Olympia in London. This is going to be absolutely phenomenal. So the Health Optimization Summit is going to have a host of amazing speakers, Amy Killen, Dave Asprey. Check the link in my show notes and you will see all the amazing speakers that are going to be there covering health, biohacking, optimization. People from the medical industry will be there. If you want to learn everything health, biohacking, optimization, you definitely need to be at this event. But anyway, I can't explain it as good as our host here, Tim Gray, or our, our guest, sorry. So listen in 
enjoy the show, and please do leave me an honest review. Let's get into it. Now, your background, okay, this is the health optimization, but your background is like in... Uh, like uh, search optimization, <laughs> correct? Yeah, I'm a marketer by trade. Yeah. I mean, you probably can tell from the amount of noise going around online. Yeah, so, um, you know, that's what I noticed, mm. you know, because I've got a retreat coming up in um, October. Mm. And as soon as I'm typing in biohacking or anything like that, I notice you're on the first couple of pages, mm -hmm. you know, every time. Not only just, the, you know, like an ad or whatever, but, you know, the organic search. So obviously that's helping out... A I've, tremendous not, yeah, amount of I've not done a lot of SEO on health optimization summit at all, but understanding the principles and putting the foundations in place helps. But I mean, content strategy or SEO hasn't been a, an objective for year one because it's a medium to long term strategy. Paid search is an immediate term influencer and social media is obviously an immediate thing because you can have sales almost immediately. But SEO depends on Google if they want to rank you and especially if you're in the alternative health space it makes it even more difficult now. Yeah it has been even more difficult like I noticed people like uh, Joe McCola a couple of the other guys are just not getting the, the play as they once did. Yeah 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 yeah, I, I, yeah I mean I discussed this with the guys internally um, yeah I mean yeah so I mean it's all about social media um, and and whatnot but the SEO side of things yeah that's just cause and effect for, for spreading the word and I get Google have more ranking algorithms and just you know content and links nowadays it's about how much noise is going along you know citations they call it so how many times is health optimization summit mentioned that they f they pick up from all their many sources and then if they think that's an important trend then they will rank it so there's many other things going on there so yeah so my background is basically in that for for the last 20 years nearly 20 years um, yeah since so, yeah, so so what made you transcend from that while well, you're still doing that into the more the health and biohacking optimization I got space? Ill. Yeah, I got ill about eight years ago um, and my immune system was shot to bits. Um, I was getting iller and iller and iller and having to have antibiotics more and more and more and more. Um, and one day the doctor shrugged his shoulders and said, you know, I don't know what to tell you. you know. Was it just some sort of immune, autoimmune default? Or? For me, I, I, I mean, I spent a long time researching it, but... Uh, it came back to me that I was very high in mercury levels, very, very high in mercury levels, actually. Do you know what that was from? Partly metal fillings. Uh, so amalgam is a co like combination of certain metals, of tin and mercury. Uh, mercury is very ba bad for the immune system, um, in my opinion. Well, it's, it's known as toxic, neurotoxic. Yeah. Um, and yet we put it in our mouths. Yeah, especially here in the UK. Yeah, yeah. yeah a lot of countries actually have banned it mm. um, or removed it from people. So there's that. Also, I was eating a lot and lot, a lot of sushi, a lot. And it's if it's farmed, then based on Dr. McCona's research and several documentaries, that the farmed fish are fed with poor fish feed that's collected from the bottom of the Baltic Sea, which is very high in mercury, because the amount of thousands and thousands of fish compacted into one pellet that they mm. feed them. And also, it's got antibiotics and things in which kills gut bacteria. Yeah. Um, so the food source becomes a full, poor food source for us, and therefore it causes digestive issues, which means you don't get the nutrients from your food. So my immune system just got worse and worse and worse and worse. Um, and it's, I mean, it's a still a struggle from time to time thing. You know, I'm in it because I need to optimize my health, not because I'm just in it for the money. Um, you know, that's just a byproduct of doing something you love. So I moved from the marketing side of things when I got ill. I, I'm more and more interested in health. And while marketing was a passion of mine, um, I found more and more that more people needed help in the health space. And I really enjoyed it, using my data mindset from marketing and psychology in health optimization to make sure that my health is better and people around me as well. And then so, I, yeah. Which is a bit of a blessing that you got sick, really, then. Well, yeah, I mean, people say you must be gutted you got ill. And I was like, no, actually, although there's been tough times, some really, really tough times, so I couldn't leave the house and stuff. I absolutely love what I do. I really do. Like, and it's amazing. It's the amount of awesome people I get to meet on a daily basis or speak to that are humble. They're not self-focused. They're, you know, sure they experiment on themselves or test these different things out, but they, they share the love. Mm. I post in the more commercial mindset of do whatever I have to do to make money. Yeah. And um, so it's been great for that. My community is great. I have a lot of good friends. I've had amazing experiences like pinching myself moments many times as a result of doing this, opposed to just working in my office doing marketing with my team. 
So, uh, so it's been great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And what one thing that I've noticed, you know, coming from a more of a bodybuilding background, and I'm not being condescending towards bodybuilding, but it isn't always the most sharing community. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started transitioning into the endurance community, doing a little bit of a hybrid athleticism, and then you know into more the biohacking community, mm -hmm. I find that the the camaraderie was definitely. There because you know it, it's a kind of a newish newish space. People want to learn from each other, and everyone's you know willing to share. They want to, you know. That's why you see these platforms such as your uh, you know your upcoming summit, you know, where people can learn from it. Now, being that you're holding this in London, have you noticed? You know, obviously you've got yourself um, a biohacking group as well. Have you noticed that? It is on par with other countries such as Finland or such as the US when it comes to biohacking or is this like very young emerging market when you compare it to the others? It's a very good question. Well, so there's two things there. Number one, on the bodybuilding side of things, bodybuilders are some of the best biohackers there ever were. They know how to hack their biology to get their body to where they want it to be. Their goal is not necessarily health, it's physique and that is a visual thing yeah. opposed to a health thing. So they forego their health sometimes for sure for, for the composition side of things. You know, there's um, Charles Poliquin, for instance. I mean, mm. amazing guy, amazing mind. But look what happened. You know, it, it comes to looks before health. He did eventually move into that space. Actually, I met him at the Bulletproof Conference um, two years ago. Um, so there's, that's one thing. The goal is different, and the goal is, is a driving force. Now, a lot of people in body comp, are actually moving over to the health optimization things. They realize some of the things that they've been doing has damaged their health or aren't as optimal as they could, or they're getting older and they want to be healthier and they go, actually, this is great and I can use this mindset for a different goal, which is health. So there's a lot of people moving across, like Ben Pakulski, for instance, classic example, and Roger Snipes as well. Um, you know, I can see Roger moving more and more into the biohacking thing, saying, look, I've got this amazing body and I've crafted this thing, yeah. but now it's bigger than that. So I think that's where the community comes in. And also people have been more segmented and have spent time on their physique and a lot of time in the gym on their own, head down. They're like, well, actually, it's quite a lonely life. It's nice to have a community of all people that are sharing the same goal, opposed to just one event for body comp, like sharing yeah. their body once every few months or whatever. So I think when it comes to health, it's a goal that everyone has. And I speak to you know, like extremely wealthy people, some of the very, very, um, well-known people but health is above everything if they haven't got their health if they're not sleeping properly if they're that and the other they have nothing else so therefore this becomes the most important thing yeah. how you look is secondary yeah so it's a higher gain and, and one thing i was going to say as well in bodybuilding i've noticed that you do have a lot of insecurities or you know like i i often say this in the talks health and fitness is a huge disconnect within my industry you know people focus on the fitness and like you said the physique the facade but nothing internally and i wonder if it's because as well that you have these social networks you have instagram you have this instant gratification people want to look like that right now so they'll forego forego their health to look like that however if they prioritize their health they would look like that anyway just long term it'd be a, have a, a better effect i mean what is it depends on what your goal is if you're unhealthy you want to make yourself healthy if you're skinny like i am you want to build up i mean it's like the thing is the health comes first because you can't build up if you haven't got the health and i think like for a lot of people, if they've got a suntan, they think they look healthy, so therefore they get more sun. They don't go, well, actually, I'm going to be more healthy if I have sun. It's a slight difference. And it's the same with people that are built bodybuilding, for instance. They go, well, I'm big and muscly, therefore I'm healthy, until they get ill. And then they go, well, actually, how do I optimize my health now? Mm. Because one doesn't equal the other. So, so that's, the, that's the mindset there. I think this is a slight shift. Um, the other thing is, is that the difference between the UK and... Um, Finland, for instance, like we're, Finland are very, very quantified in everything they do. They only talk about things that are quantified, no fringe science, only everything that's got studies behind it, um, because they're trying to change the system to integrate to the world without pushing buttons. And so they're, they've been doing it a lot longer. They've been doing it like seven or eight years, I think, not quite as long as the Bulletproof guys. Uh, Dave, should I say, um, but they're a slightly different approach. Now, they have a very natural world. They have the cleanest air in the world, in Finland, for instance, apparently, um, whereas America doesn't, and England sits in between the two. So the definition of biohacking in each place is slightly different. 
for them it's about nature. For America, it's about the product to help def fuel deficiencies or be faster and better. For us, it's like in the UK, it's a bit from there, a bit from there, i.e. some nature where we can do it. And if we can't get to nature because we live in the city, how do we mimic nature, you know, like using red light or grounding mats or meditation so that, you know, we're in a calm field somewhere, you know, whatever. So it's, it's busier in both of those places because they've been going longer but eventually the UK will catch up massively because it's pulling in all of the mindsets, not just biohacking. It's going health and fitness and medical and wellness and nutrition and biohacking and paleo and keto and everything along the way into one space and going, hey, hang on a minute, we've all got very similar goals. We've all got smart minds. Let's come together and let's change this so we're actually healthier and we look good. And that's the big difference between how it's going. Right, okay. How that make sense? No, that make, no, it makes perfect, perfect sense. Now, you know, you're very experienced in this, in this sector. Do you actually, you know, and I know a lot of people actually work with athletes and work with people as well. Is that something that you do? You have clients yourself and help optimize their health? I don't have clients, no. Um, I have helped friends and family, like, for instance, with my mum. I uh, worked with her to review, re, re, um, like, get rid of her osteopenia, for instance or my ex-girlfriend's mum, osteoporosis, by figuring out how to hack it to actually help the biology, you know, biology do the right thing, basically. Um, and then there's odd friends that have got issues going on, I'm happy to help on a case-by-case -case basis, but I don't take clients. Right. Um, I mean, I, my mindset has been, I can help 10 people and be very stretched with everyone's problems, or I can help affect change on a bigger scale, spreading awareness to it. Then it's not about me, it's not limited to me. Um, whereas it's about a movement and bringing everything together. It's like Dave, for instance, Dave Asprey, he could have worked with 10 clients and spread the word by those 10 clients. They'll always be limited to those 10 clients or mm. whatnot. Or he can go, well, actually, I'm not going to trademark the term biohacker or biohacking. I'm going to let it spread, and I'm going to help change the world from the top-down approach, which is exactly what I think is the right move. Yeah, then sure. it's, it's not about myself or my ego um, as well, which separates that away from, and we can spread the wealth, yeah. spread the wealth and health. That way. Smart, smart. Now, a lot, a lot of my followers coming from the f fitness side of things and bodybuilding, uh, you know, and in this day and age, even though we want to like optimize our testosterone levels, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this day and age is that you know we have a generation now, and mm -hmm. you know, like uh, Anthony J, he's written a book on estrogen generation, where mm -hmm. we have the lowest levels of testosterone that we've uh, uh, experienced. You know, whether it be coming from pollutants, whether it be contaminants, mm -hmm. antibiotics plastics, mm. et cetera, et cetera, EMFs. Um, how, how can people, especially you know, the fitness community who are possibly overtraining or putting themselves through a lot of free radical damage and experiencing low testosterone levels, what is the low hanging fruit do you believe is gonna be the best for people to optimize their testosterone levels? The question is, is why, why is the testosterone lower than ever? Um, Sure, I mean, down regulates for a reason, and it's usually a protective thing. So, for instance, people have high cortisol, or there's stress, and their adrenaline is high, they're pumped all the time, they get into bed and they're still pumped and they can't switch their mind off. Their testosterone probably down regulates so that they don't have so much energy and drive so that they can actually recuperate a bit. So, it's about a bit more recovery. The other thing is, it's about um, grounding, and sunlight is a big thing within hormones, actually. So if you think about, uh, I feel like I say this a lot at the moment, but it's so relevant. If you have a plant and you put it under a tarpaulin, it will, won't grow because it doesn't get the right light waves, it doesn't get the right water or anything. It won't grow. It's apparent very quickly. With the human body, it's not so apparent so quickly. We can live in a dark country, not have sunlight, not connect with the ground, not get enough hydration, and it would decline over a period of time. It won't be an immediate thing within a few days like a plant. But when we look at a plant, we know it. You know, we, we know the same with our pets, with our dogs, for instance. You know, if you don't feed it or water it properly or let it get out and run, it's not a healthy dog and it gets ill. And yet we don't notice it with ourselves because we're smarter than that. It's ridiculous. So when it comes to testosterone or hormone optimization specifically, is when we connect with the ground, like, and this sounds woo-woo, but it's not. There's science behind it. When we connect with the ground, we get negative electrons from the earth, which basically scavenges free radicals. So it reduces inflammation in the body. Number one, we wear rubber shoes, stops us connecting with the ground, so we're not connected to the earth anymore. 
sunlight. Yeah. When sun, our skin is so much less photoreceptive than our eyes, which is why we get woken up with sunlight in our eyes a lot easier, but we're still woken up when sunlight goes on our skin as well. Well, what does that do? When the sunlight lands on our skin, it helps produce vitamin D, as well as many other hormones, because sunlight is positive photons, which is energy. So that helps us produce a hormone, which is vitamin D, because vitamin D is a, is a hormone, not a vitamin, by the way. So if it's helping us produce hormones and it's on our skin, but we're not getting enough of it on our skin, what does that say about our eyes? Like, our eyes are very photoreceptive, so therefore the sunlight that goes into our eyes, and I'm not saying directly, at a 45 degree angle or more, actually helps balance our hormones. And again, there is science behind this. So people that wear contact lenses actually have plastic or glass over their eye, which actually changes the energy that goes into their eye, which means that their hormones aren't correcting properly or balancing properly. Or you wear sunglasses, which stops the sun going in your eyes. There's a book called, um, I think it's Light and Healing by John Ott, and it goes into the science and how he's tested this on plants and the effects that it has on humans from sunlight on the skin and in the eyes. So if you're not connecting with the earth and getting negative electrons and you're not getting sunlight, positive photons from the sun, we're not like a human circuit board in between the two, which means our body isn't healing properly and it's not collecting energy properly. We are getting energy from the sun to help us grow. We get energy from our food sources, which help us grow as well as nutrients. But if we're not getting one, we're not going to heal properly and we're not going to grow properly. Therefore, our hormones won't be balanced properly. So there's a lot of science behind all of that. Mm. So tell me, when was the last time you got your shoes off? Well, it was probably, yes, uh, actually, it was uh, just before I took off. But I was saying to my fiance, Sybil, now, when we were walking outside, I said, I got to find some grass. I got to find a grassy patch mm. just so I can ground myself. But I haven't found anything yet. So if you think about having a, a bottle of water like this, and if you pour it out like that, water will come out. So imagine that's inflammation in the body. Yeah. If you're on the ground for one minute, what's, how much is going to come out? <laughs> Right. The more we're connected, the more it works. We're yeah. all inflamed. We're all having anti-inflammatory foods, and yet we're not grounding. Connect with the ground as much as you can. I have a grounding bed sheet. I have a, a, a grounding mouse mat, which I use. Um, I've just got some things on order to go on my shoes uh, called Earth, E-R-T-H-E, which basically is a strap that connects to the bottom into your shoes so that you're earthed out while you're walking. Wow. There are earth runners, which are flip-flops that actually do this as well. So connect with the earth, get some sunlight. Um, Dr. Jack Cruz's work, controversial character, but is based all around sunlight, EMFs, grounding, cold thermogenesis, and DHAs in terms of the health of yours, which is the final piece of the puzzle, actually, of the hormones, mm. is if you haven't got the right balance of your omegas, then you're not gonna work properly as well. Um, I personally like astaxanthin. Yeah, love it. But, like, at the moment, I've just started mega dosing with it, um, so 100 milligrams a day. Um, I actually met someone the other day in this space that um, said that he mega dosed with a gram, but I think he meant 100 milligrams. Um, and he said within six months his hair stopped being grey and it went back to his original colour and he had a full head of normal hair, colour hair. I didn't see him beforehand, I didn't know him beforehand, but the point is, is that's how it helps the body with certain enzymatic reactions work properly. Yeah. Um, so having the right oils, astaxanthin, astaxanthin, um, Omega 3, 6, 7, 9, and making sure that they're balanced correctly, as well as sunlight and grounding, and hydration for the right minerals so that your body and your, your oxygen and your electrical system is working right. That's a way to get your hormones back in balance, your energy up, your mental clarity the best, and your health come back into line very quickly. Okay. There's a lot Perfect. of information there. There's a lot of information there. And uh, one, one of the other pieces that I see that's a low hanging fruit and definitely an issue with me. Mm. Um, I went to a, a clinic, uh, Dr. Old's, uh, Dr. Spinag's clinic in Oldsmar at the end of 2014. Mm. So I'm having a major sleep problem. I was only sleeping on average three hours a night, which hasn't been much different to my tour in India recently. But uh, one of the things that I, I, I definitely notice as well, and in this day and age when everybody is obviously getting the blue light into their retina from the devices by going on their phones in, while in bed, is that uh, they're just not sleeping. People aren't sleeping. And obviously, if you're an athlete, sleep needs to be optimized even more so, because if you don't recover, 
which dictates your performance, you're not going to perform. And obviously that can have a very negative effect on, on uh, people's testosterone as well. But one of the things that they notice is that when they've studied a lot of people in the military, because they don't get that much sleep, they're woken up uh, early in the morning, they're under a lot of stress, they're in t different time zones, is that their testosterone is very, very low. Yeah, well, we sleep to reverse the damage that we've done during the day using the energy we have collected during the day. So if you think about that for a second, we are collecting sunlight to help our bodies um, to collect energy. We are eating food sources for energy that has come from the sun in the first place. Sure, we're having nutrients in there as well, enzymes, amino acids and things like that for the building blocks of the body and electrolytes within that. But the point is we are collecting sun so our body works properly and we are doing damage during the day. We then sleep so that our body can recover. So if you're doing the damage, but you're not collecting the sun and you're not sleeping, it's all use and no repair. Yeah. Which is why. And so the body then down regulates and goes, I'm not ready to be out in this world because I'm using too much energy and not recovering enough. So that's why the sleep piece is just so vitally important in all of this. So it's, it's funny because this has come up twice in the last week now, but if you think about sleep from an evolutional point of view, things that w sleep has survived. It is a trait in humans that has continued. So it has a beneficial effect on life for some reason. Otherwise, it would have been weeded out of existence. Right? So those that sleep survive. Most things sleep at night. They start producing melatonin when the sun goes down. They stop producing melatonin when the sun comes up. That includes predators, most of them. So therefore, it's safer to sleep and switch off when predators could get us than not sleeping and staying awake and keeping fending those animals off. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So therefore, sleep has a massive beneficial thing for us. Optimizing it is absolutely critical, which is why it's fundamental number one. I always talk about sleep optimization. Get your sleep down, because otherwise nothing else works. So where technology comes in, blue light, wakes the brain up, stops us producing melatonin, which means we're up later. And then sunrise comes up and it wakes us up earlier. So we're getting less sleep. Mm. That's where technology is damaging us. So we can use technology to reverse that, <laughs> ironically. So we go, what technology can we use to make sure that we're reversing the use of technology? It's, it's paradoxical, it sounds. So blackout blind. Make sure that you don't see sunrise if you're staying up late. Even better, make sure that you go to bed earlier. But if you're using a blue light, a phone with blue light on it, obviously use blue blockers and you've got to have as much blue light cut out as possible after sunset because that's when we shouldn't be seeing blue light we should be seeing red light with a fire for instance when we cook our food or whatever before we go to bed and this is why circadian rhythms are so important for the whole it's fundamentally important for the whole of life mm -hmm. so yeah so that's why hormones don't regulate i know that was a long-winded answer no, but no, no, it's like if people don't realize how important sleep is and they're going faster oh, i can get away with four hours sleep bullshit absolute you got to get that down, otherwise nothing else will work. Okay, sorry to interrupt this podcast, guys, but it is time for me to have a beautiful cup of quaff. And the cup of coffee that I'm having at the moment is a Laird's, because I, I'm sure that you would have seen me uh, on my Insta stories using this Laird's Insta Fuel. So the Insta Fuel is an instant coffee. The one that I have at the moment is the unsweetened. There is a sweetened version, and I have the unsweetened. The ingredients in this coffee has coconut milk powder, freeze-dried Arabica coffee and it has aquamin which is a calcium from marine algae so it's a very very healthy instant coffee and it tastes freaking awesome because you have the the creamer within it it's kind of like a nice smooth nurturing cuddling latte and it has your full range of the four mcts your c6 your c8 is obviously very good to get into ketosis your c10 and your c12 no artificial colors or preservatives baby it's a very clean plant-based fuel and i also wanted to remind you guys as well to head over to juve social that's at j o double uh, sorry j double o double v social on instagram i'll put the link to that in my show, uh, show notes and um 
they are our new podcast partner, which I only allow people that I feel is authentic to myself and a brand to be partners with this podcast, because I'm sure you would have seen that I've been using the Juve infrared light therapy for over a year now, specifically when I'm in my office all day and I don't get the restorative red light that I'd like from the sunlight. And when I'm traveling and I'm just at airports, in airplanes, I'm in taxis, I'm in conference um, meeting rooms, and I don't get that restorative red. So this is the way that I can biohack my environment, especially when I'm exposed to only blue light all day on my photoreceptors on my skin. So check out those, those guys, and we will get back into the show with Mr. Tim Gray. So what are your tips then, okay, and then like blocking out you know, the, the light in your room? You know, I know there's a couple of others out there as well that, you know, making sure that the room is at a certain temperature. What are your top tips to help people optimize their sleep if they are kind of like what you call wired and tired? They go to bed, they're tired, but they're so wired they just can't go to sleep. You know, what is happening there and how can they optimize it? If you put your phone down for three days, for instance, after four o'clock, you switched off as a test. Like this, is, this will show how important it is to you or your listeners of how important sleep is to them. If they can't put their phone down after 6 p.m. for three days in a row, but they still moan about having bad sleep, that's on them, right? So put your phone down for three days in a row and wear blue blocking glasses so you haven't got the lights on after sunset, like essentially in the blue light and see how much better you sleep after three days. There was actually, um, I heard, I think it was Matthew Walker who wrote the book Why We Sleep recently, saying that there was um, a, a thing going on where they got school children to stop using their phones or computers one night a week, and they have one night of sleep much better than the rest. Funny that. So I would say blue blocking glasses after 6 p.m. Buy them on Amazon for 19.99, just any random brand. I don't necessarily trust all the lenses because you don't know what blue light actually block out. My preference is either Swannies, Swanwicks, um, or RAR Optics. Um, so yeah, wear those. Um, also make sure that you don't have coffee after midday because coffee has a half-life of six hours, which means at nine hours, um, it's, it's 25%. So if you're having it at 3 o'clock afterwards, you're going to bed at midnight with 25% caffeine in your blood still, so you're not going to sleep then either. So you're using blue light and caffeine, how are you supposed to sleep? And then the sunrise comes up in the morning and you're awake, you haven't had your sleep. Earthing bed sheet is another one, which connects to the earth socket, um, which then obviously gives you the negative electrons from the earth. And there's a grounding documentary called Grounding, I think it is, by Clint Ober talking about the science behind all of this and how the effects of grounding actually works on the body. There is a brand in the, in the UK that sells all these products, um, earthing products. What, what, take it, what are they called? What's um, a brand called, do you know? Well, we can put it in a yeah, show notes anyway. I can't we'll remember get off you later. it's on my head. I mean, I'm not aligned with them or anything other yeah. than that, that I brought their, their double bed, uh, king-size bed sheet from them, which, which is great in the mouse mat. Um, so that's that. I'd also have a um, essential oil diffuser yeah. and use lavender oil because there's a lot of studies behind lavender oil it actually really does calm people down very very well and depending on <clears throat> like what supplements people are using if they're taking vitamin B supplements after kind of one o'clock in the afternoon you'll be wired because things like B12 methocobalamin for instance um, it increases so many different processes it can make your brain go at 200 miles an hour so you can have 50 milligrams of niacin before bed which helps calm the brain down which is amazing and if they have been using blue light take two or three milligrams of melatonin before bed because mm. that would give you fake melatonin to help you sleep. Yeah. But that would be a good indicator of like how much better you can sleep. So does it make any difference as well, like it's coming down to a couple of things now, whether you're a fast or slow caffeine metabolizer is dependent on how late that you can take it, but you'd obviously have to have a test done to find out if you're one of those yeah. people. I mean, generally most people know if they can sleep, they drink a cup of coffee and still go to sleep doesn't mean that it's not affecting them. Mm. Um, if you're a fast metabolizer, I would imagine that you can sleep easier, but you don't sleep as deep and don't have as much REM sleep. And you need to have the right balances of them because the body doesn't work without any one of the sleep, sleep phases. Um, on average, I believe six hours half-life, but it can be greater or shorter for some people. For me, I think six hours is absolutely spot on because by cutting my coffee back from three, four o'clock to midday, then my sleep is significantly better as a result. 
and I track that obviously with my aura ring mm -hmm. um, to show the effects of that. So what else is there? Um, I have a full red light stack from Red Light Rising that's at the end of my bed with a remote control. So I use that as my bedroom light. Um, so it's bright red and it says blue lighting in my room, which yeah. is another one. Um, I have a blackout blind that is completely blacked out and um, which you can buy from Amazon, which sucks to the window. And then I've used um, duct tape all the way around the edge so that no light comes in at all. It's literally pitch black. Probably looks like a drug den from the outside, huh? <laughs> it's a fit. With the red lights and the you, duct tape on the windows. You wouldn't, know, you wouldn't see. I mean, it's all these things are integrated into the room, so it's like it's not like a, a sex chamber or anything. <laughs> it's like it's not it's not weird. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's quite a lot of different things that I do. Um, is there one thing that you noticed that had the most profound effect? Was it the glasses? Was it black it out? Blue blockers and black blue outlines, blockers. because that's the natural circadian reset. No sun, sleep, some sun, wake up. Yeah. If you can block that out, and that means blocking out the blue light, whether it's sunrise in the morning that's bluer, or blue light which is fake in the evening, that would be the single most important thing to do of all, definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I for one wear the, uh, the blue light blocking glasses. And one thing that I'm careful of as well is because obviously, like you said, the photoreceptors on your eyes or within your eyes are a lot more powerful than what's on your skin, but I'll make sure I'll wear my pajamas as well <laughs> to cover up all the photoreceptors on my skin. Mm. Uh, that's one of the things, whether it works or not, I don't know. I thought, you know, better be safe than sorry. Mm. But one thing that I noticed that worked for me is that I don't seem to produce much vitamin D from the sun. So I have to supplement very high with it. And once I started supplementing higher with it, I found myself being a little bit more calm and being able to release that melatonin to sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but again, you'd have to go for a test to find out if you're actually deficient. Well, I think if you're deficient in vitamin D, <clears throat> supplementing with vitamin D isn't the answer, personally. So that's just, this is uh, jo uh, Dr. McCullough said um, recently, he's like, <clears throat> vitamin D tells you the level of sunlight that you've had and how much sunlight you need. It doesn't tell you how much vitamin D you need to supplement. It will help, yeah. it will help definitely, because it is part of, it's a small piece of a massive puzzle, more than we know. So if your levels are low, it's like your gas tank being low of gas. You're going, well, one of the elements of gas is this oil. So we're gonna put oil in there, which will show the level's really high, but it doesn't mean the car's gonna run better. Mm -hmm. So it's an indicator that you need more sun. And, it, and if I'm not able to get that sun, could I hack it from from my infrared panels? Could I get that vitamin D uh, increase? There's from different using... ways of getting it from different lighting, yes, but there's nothing better than getting the natural thing and supplement with vitamin D. I mean, I, like I've had a lot of staff in my agency. When I say a lot, three or four girls specifically have had emotions that are up and down, or um, have come to me about like their hormones um, before I moved away from agency life, and I've every time I've got them to test vitamin D levels and supplement with it quite high dose for a few weeks with vitamin K as well. Yeah. Um, and um, after a few weeks they say, yeah, I'm a lot calmer, like I'm a lot less anxiety issues and hormones do generally balance with that as well. But that shows that that's part of the sunlight that we would get, which we can supplement from other places to, to help optimize uh, hormones. Um, Interesting. But okay. really, I mean, if you're in the sun, you will you will produce vitamin D as well as many other things, but it just means you're not getting enough for right. what you need. Um, generally, the darker the skin, the more sunlight is needed. The lighter the skin, which is why when you go to Finland, they're very pale. And when you go to, obviously, Africa, they're much darker. And it's, that's, a, that's how we have evolved to be able to take the certain amount of sunlight that we get. Um, which is why people in Northern Hemisphere are so much more sensitive to sun and burn almost immediately. Yeah, uh, yeah. I still have my Welsh tan, even though I do try to spend a little bit of time in the sun in the, in the US, you know. And would you say this is kind of the s similar because the guys usually are complaining now of, uh, or not, not complaining, but they're assertive to the fact that they have lower testosterone. And a lot of females in the space as well, within the fitness industry, have uh, like uh, uh, problems with their thyroid, inactive thyroids. So would you say it'd be the similar sort of approach? You need to optimize the sleep, making sure you get plenty of sunlight, maybe you know, grounding, would it be the same, uh, same Give approach? Give the body what it needs. It's a matter of figuring out what that is. I mean, generally in the bodybuilding world, women have higher testosterone and lower estrogen. And the guys sometimes have lower testosterone and higher estrogen for whatever reason, you know. Um, <clears throat> I think 
it also comes back to another thing which is bigger than any supplement or any nutrient or anything at all is um, gender roles within the world. This is something John Gray would be speaking about at the summit actually. So John Gray is one of the most published authors of all time. It's all about community and relationship. And one thing that he, he talks about is how men that are at work have higher testosterone. Women that are at home looking at nurturing have higher estrogen. When a man is at home nurturing, he has higher estrogen, and a, a woman at work has higher testosterone. So high-powered high business women generally have high testosterone and very sexually charged because they have high testosterone. As soon as you put them in a home setting, their testosterone comes down and their estrogen goes up, which is why part of the reason, and not, it's not from a sexist perspective at all, because I'm all for equality, but the point is, is that where we are placed determines epigenetics or our environment determines who we are. So a high-powered businesswoman will be very go-getter, very to the point, very sexually dr driven as well and charged. Her at home should be more of a mother. And this is why a lot of people suddenly say, oh, she used to be such a high-powered business girl and now she's a real nurturing mum. She's so changed. It's funny that. So there is an element of that as well. So if you put a, a female in a gym setting that's pump working out, pumping like weights all the time in a male environment, she's going to become higher in testosterone naturally. So there are other elements here as well. Plus, there is also grounding and sunlight and nutrition and things like that. And when you're giving the body things that a male would typically have in terms of providing, going off killing an animal and eating a certain diet compared to bringing it back to give to the family where the, 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 the female cares for the children in a nurturing setting, she's going to have higher estrogen because on an unconscious level she thinks that she is a provider opposed to a nurturer. Mm. So it's really interesting. There's a lot of science and a lot of um, history behind these specific things as well. For your audience, though, the most important thing is getting the basics right. <laughs> um, in my opinion, because going down the relationship and changing your job and <laughs> changing your home setting is a lot harder than just actually focusing on sleeping properly, hydrating properly, um, and grounding in sunlight. Yeah, because quite often we'd, you know, we'd go to the doctor and say, we have this issue and then they'd give us a pill to put a band-aid on that issue without looking at that low-hanging fruit that's available to us yep. and maybe get to bed early at the same time mm. every night and like you said staying hydrated you know ha having a little bit more balance because uh, you know there's always a pill and there's always a prescription for something mm -hmm. however making that small sacrifice that's going to actually see the success in your health is something that a lot of us just seem to uh, you know, miss out. And, 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 it, and it's the same sort of thing that I've noticed with biohacking as well. A lot of people will go for that juve lamp or go for you know, whatever it may be, that PMF uh, device, without actually looking at getting that sunlight first. They're willing just to pay that extra money to make it easier on themselves. You know, it's much like people going and buying supplements that think they're going to build muscle without actually eating properly. You know, it just doesn't work that way. But I noticed that in the biohacking space, if people have the money, if they have a good income, they'll spend their money on every every sauna, infrared sauna, and uh, juve lamp or whatever, without actually optimizing that low hanging fruit. Have you noticed that here in the UK as well? Um, everyone wants a quick fix, like for instance, steroids use in the, in the gym setting it's yeah. like well, actually put the graft in and you can get quite big you yeah. never get to that size but you can get quite big but people do it too early they get on it too early you get too big too quick because they want that magic bullet they want the result quickly and then they're always chasing the next stimulus and that's a typical thing in our world like with the dopamine hit you know we always want another date or another woman or this or that the other we're always chasing something opposed to going i'm happy with where i'm at and i think with the pill um, taking a supplement and says changing your diet is because it's easy and the biohacking does make life easier it does but it, you've got to get the fundamentals right first exactly. um, so yeah so I think that some people do use their use supplements for the sake of using supplements and also it's through a lack of awareness where if people have this knowledge and understand some of these basics they can do these things and then supplement later which is my purpose of talking about the five fundamentals of sleep and hydration and sorting out your oral and dental health, making sure you're getting sunlight and grounding and making sure that you're breathing or having the correct oxygen. Once you've got those in place, then you can start looking at diet and um, 
squats and exercise and things like that because if you're exercising before you've got those things right any of those things you're going to be knackered you're just going to stress your body out and put it into a into turmoil again yeah now i noticed on your socials changing gears a little bit here now is that only because i get this question all the time from people in uk because i get my blood reports done quite often and i can go anywhere like great plains quest diagnostics it's very easy in the us as i'm sure you know for me to go and get a blood test easy i can have it pretty much sent to my door uh, but here in the UK, a lot of people have a lot of confusion over that. And I noticed on your post that you actually go and have your blood test about every month, correct? Uh, one, one of the things that I do say in my seminars, I'll ask people, how many of you changed your oil in your, the car the last year or changed your tires? Everyone puts your hands up. Mm. How, how many of you actually had your blood tested? No one really puts their hands up. You know, I think it's a huge fundamental part of people's health that you know we are much more uh, valuable than that car but we don't place the value in ourselves we, we place it in the car instead <laughs> what are the tests that people should look for here in the UK specifically you know what what companies I should say how can they go and get a blood test done because a lot of doctors will say there's nothing wrong with you you're not going to get a blood test and obviously for the listeners listeners around the world what should people be testing for well the first thing is Going back to your analogy about um, how often do you change the oil in your car, <clears throat> we take care of our car more than we do ourselves. The one thing that we have on this planet that is ours is our bodies, and yet we trust other people's opinions with it. We trust everyone else's decisions with what we put in it, and yet we don't care for it as much as we care for our car. Like, just think about that for a second. Like, really, we're in 200 miles an hour. Like, you get your car serviced, or you look after it, or you polish it, or you clean it out, and you take pride in enjoying it, but people don't with their bodies. Sure, in the body comp world, yeah, people do polish their car all the time, so to speak. Um, but I think that that's one thing that really is our most precious, prized thing of everything. And yet we don't look after it properly. You know, we don't turn that engine off enough. We don't change the oil enough, any of these things. So that's just one thing I'd like to add in there. Now, in terms of blood testing, there's many you can do. And it's very difficult in the UK to get them without, well, you can't get them without going through a practitioner. So you need a functional medicine practitioner or a nutritionist or one of these guys that have qualifications because if you order a test direct and then interpret it yourself, it can be quite dangerous. So this is the assumption in the UK. So I work with many doctors and specialists and have many friends in this space so I can generally go to them and ask them to order it for me and they know my case history, so it's fine. Um, I like to check full blood count. So I know my white blood cell count and the breakdown of each of those. Um, my red blood cell count, typically I've had lower uh, red blood count in the past. What about your whites? Um, and lower as well. And that's quite normal with people that have got high levels of mercury historically. And I've seen that come up over a period of time of collating the mercury out of my system. Um, I've also, I, I got toxoplasmosis a year ago. Um, unfortunately, I'm susceptible, I have been susceptible to viruses in the past uh, just because of the low immune system. And so I've been monitoring that pretty much every month to see how my body's doing with that, um, as well as many other things. I mean, obviously you've got thyroid, which is a common one. You've got T3, free T3, reverse T3, um, which are really important to look at the reverse as well, because on standard tests, if you have T3 checked and not reverse T3, you just see T3. You don't know what the breakdown is between reverse and free, uh, reverse and non-reverse. So um, that's really important um, as well. So. I mean, I don't generally do thyroid every month, and I don't look at many other things every month, but de definitely full blood count, liver function um, as well. And then I check, um, I use Ubiome uh, for my gut tests generally, or Genova Labs, the GI effects comprehensive stool tests, which is probably the most comprehensive. You do you do the three-day test? Uh, yes, I do, yeah. yeah, I've done that three, four, five times now. Um, I've tried things like Viome, which is okay, but I mean, I, personally, the gold standard for me is Genova. Mm. The most important blood test of all for yeah. me right now, and I think this is the future of where health is going, and Dr. Ted Akikose would be speaking about this at the summit, actually, is intercellular testing, so metabolomics. So basically, it looks at the cells and says, what's in the cell that shouldn't be, i.e. mercury or whatever, and what isn't in the cell that should be, i.e. deficient in magnesium or whatever. So it's all right checking free blood or all these bits and pieces or your gut bacteria, but what is actually happening on a cellular level? Because what's happening on a cellular level determines how the body is repairing. So it might say that you're too high in taurine or too low in calcium or whatever it may be. 
and you, know, you look at the blood and magnesium may be f fine free roaming around the blood but it might not be in the cell so therefore you're deficient in magnesium which means you have tight tight shoulders and things and you'd be training and it would just be horrible and you have to go and have a massage you're supposed to just making sure that you get magnesium into the cell so looking at a cellular level is ultimately how the body will repair and work so genetics will tell you what can go wrong sickness tells you what has gone wrong if you can figure it out intercellular will tell you where the body's at right now and what building blocks it needs to perform at its best so Genova do one called the Nutra Eval test. Uh, what's that called? Nutra Eval. Okay. So it's N U T R E V A L. Um, and Dr. Ted Akikoso and Dr. Scott Sher will both be speaking about this at the summit as well. So that for me that's the future of health because it doesn't matter what your genetics are saying. It doesn't matter what the sickness is saying. Sure there might be a few things to clean up, but when you look at a cellular level and go, well actually I haven't got this in the cell get that in there for the body to repair properly. Have you done that test? Yes, I have. I yeah. really need to do that test. It's, it's amazing. It really is. It really is amazing. Um, so yeah, it could just be there's one thing that you're, one or two building blocks that you're missing as a result, you're not working properly. Yeah, for so, sure. So yeah, for me, when I look at it and I say, well, actually I'm deficient in, um, let's just think one of the things, uh, Magnesium at all? No, no, not anymore. Um, no, I've, done, I've, I've done that one. But let's just say I'm deficient in one of the amino acids, for instance. It's like, but why am I deficient in amino acid when I have the full profile of amino acids going into my diet every day? Well, it could be because of mercury toxicity, which mercury can actually stop certain enzymatic reactions from ha happening. Is that because it has stress on your liver, so then it's not able to be absorbed? Yes, yeah, yeah, partly that, yeah. So basically, if you've not got the right enzymes being created by the liver, you're not digesting your proteins down into peptides, down into amino acids. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you might not be getting certain amino acids because you're not digesting the, the proteins properly. Exactly, yeah. So by going, and actually, why am I deficient? Okay, I haven't got the right enzymatic reactions. So point one is to get the mercury out, sure, but that's a medium to long-term gain. Number two is get the enzymes in. So you get something like proteolytic enzymes. So mass, mass Zymes do one. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, I love, love those them. guys. They're amazing. Um, they're sponsors of this podcast, they really, by the way. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, they're, they're great. I mean, they're great. Um, Wade from their nose is stuff, and I know yeah. Andy from the UK over here. Um, the point is, is by adding the right enzymes in, you actually have so much more protein that you break down into the amino acids, the building blocks for our bodies to repair, which means you don't have to have so much protein. Mm, exactly. So there's a lot in the body comp world actually just sticking in more and more protein, yeah. more and more raw beef, or which should I say rare beef for lunch, and or chicken breasts left, right, and center is in fact they could actually cut that down and add the right enzymes in while they're doing that. Then they go off and sort the mercury out because they've had a lot of tuna, which is high in mercury if it's farmed. Sort that out, sort their gut out, job done. Less protein, more muscles. Yeah. And it's funny, it's fascinating. Like, I, have, I love having these conversations because what I think is absolutely fascinating is that we talk about, you know, our longevity and our health span. Mm. However, people, whether it be in, from the endurance sector, mm. Olympic athletes, bodybuilders, they could learn so much and optimize their performance so much because we just think about running further, running faster, mm. eating more calories as opposed to looking at you know bodybuilders and you know endurance athletes etc will look at a calorific function but not look at you know what that calorie can do you know or where that calorie comes from they just get in that calorie thinking okay if this calorie comes from a fiber or if it comes from a protein source or if it comes from a carbohydrate or fat that is good enough it's the quote unquote healthy calorie but if their body's not absorbing it, they're just taking it in, they're not recovering, they're not performing, they're not functioning as they should do. However, if they just spent a little bit more time educating themselves in this area, they could have that step above everyone else. It's quite, quite often, like when I was in India, you know, there's a lot of myths and misconceptions over there. They all talk about supplements and steroids in the same sentence, you know, like I'll get interviewed by the media there and I'll ask about that. A lot of the time I'll say, you know, your steroid is right here. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Not just your discipline and to push yourself mm -hmm. to that next level, mm -hmm. but your education. You know, we are here to evolve and advance ourselves. And biohacking is the cutting edge. It is the cusp of that that athletes 
really need to learn from. And like, you know, Ben is doing a great job with this. Mm. And I'm hoping that this podcast will be able to reach out to my followers mm. where they can apply this. Mm. You know, it's absolutely phenomenal. Well, I mean, there's a friend of mine, David Nerstrom, that I met in LA by chance at Bulletproof Upgrade Labs once. And he's all about biohacking the MBA. MBA. Like one percent gains of these things. He's a great guy. He's a good, very good friend of mine. And when we first connected, I was like, "Well, it's all about one percent gains." But sometimes you've got to get the eighty percent in first, you know, and then you go for the one percent yeah. afterwards. And there was actually, I'm trying to remember the exact history of it, but there's, um, I think it was a cycling, a group of cyclers. Um, that they kept on losing. Uh, they kept on losing all their races. They weren't doing very well. So they're like, well, how can we optimize everything by 1% across the board? So we make the saddle slightly better. We make the tires slightly better. We do all this. Like, they even painted the whole truck where they carried the bikes in black so they could see the dust on the brakes. You know, like everything 1%. And they end up smashing the records by improving 1% all over the place. Well, biohacking, you, if you look on a cellular level and you can see 15 1%s in there, that's a big gain right there. Like... Like recovery so much better, um, energy so much better, all of these things together. So biohacking can quantify that if you're doing it properly, not just chucking in more supplements, which is early stage biohacking. Let's just throw more in. Actually, no, but what do we need to put in specifically? Opposed to just throwing more crap at the wall and letting it stick, putting more protein in and hoping we digest it. No, no, no. Like, yeah, we, we definitely do take a shotgun approach to everything, don't we? It's like, okay, if we took every single supplement out of there, we'd probably die. Yeah. But they probably all have a benefit. We just need to find out which ones have the benefit for us. So that's what, that's what the metab metabolomics is doing. It looks at what you need and goes, do this. That's it. So That's all the guesswork is out because yeah. we do pretty much guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. And at biohacking, there's less guesswork. There's some fringe science, fringe science things in there, where we test some things because you've got to test it to figure out whether it works or not. Sometimes, like for instance, peptides. Once upon a time, people were testing those and going, "Oh, let's see if this works." Now, now they're pretty well uh, in the system. You know, in America, they, they can oh, prescribe them. Yeah. You know, and that was because they work. But someone had to once upon a time try them to see that they worked, and it might have been a flop and might not have worked. But the point is, they did, and now they're there. So there are some fringe science things in biohacking, and there is a bit more pop culture with some things as well. But the point is, the, the true biohacking is quantified of going, this is what we need, and this is what we're going to do about it, and this is why, and then see the body perform. Mm -hmm. So what sort of like you know what sort of activities do you like to participate in physically yourself? Not a lot. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, my, my biohacking journey was about health yeah. and energy and mental clarity and immune system. And but do you part of it, like, I'm assuming, like, if you, if you want to improve your longevity, yep. then you're doing what, like, the Blue Zones do. You're participating in some form of low-level activity at the least. I operate 200 miles an hour every day, but now I've pretty much, touch wood, fixed my goal of health optimization. I am now moving on to the next stage of things for more physical aspects. Actually, there's a guy called Ricky Warren, Rick.official on Instagram, um, who I'm just going to start working with tomorrow. I've just started working on my posture again. I've started wearing Vivo barefoot, flat foot shoes, um, and start looking into the body comp side of things. I was in body comp when I was in my early 20s in some forms with the, with the fast tracked way of getting bigger but after a while obviously I let that go and shrunk back down to this tiny little size and I fuel for my energy not for my body comp but now the next step is to work on that so I do cold plunge and sauna every yeah. week um, there's a Russian spa uh, called Banya Number One in London that I go to every week, and they have cold, they have cold hot and cold thermo, cold yeah. plunge they in there. They have a sauna, and then they have a cold plunge pool as well. How far is that from here? Seven or eight minutes. Wow. Okay, um, I'll be there. <laughs> so yeah, if they do drop-ins, I'll be there. No, I went. I go with Roger from time to time. Roger Snipes from time to time. Um, it's really, really nice. It's good for the immune system. Yeah. Right? So I do that. Um, I have an X3 bar that I'm testing out that John, uh, Dr. John Vanquish sent me um, a few months ago, which is great. Um, but, um, what else? I mean, there's many things that I do, but the body comp, or should I say, the exercise part of it has been very small. Um, until now, I'm running again, which I really love running. Uh, my body com <laughs> composition is naturally skinny. Yeah. Um, I can build up quite quickly, but not to the level of most of your, you guys. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. So going on to the, the, the your health optimization summit that you've got coming up now in September, um, you know that that is a huge step because this is a big event. It's not as if you've started small here. You know, at what point? What was that tipping point that said, "This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow through." Like, you know, that's that's, that's a scary jump, but a jump that so far has showed to be the right one. Um. I ran the meetup group in London, the Biohacker London meetup group, and it grew quite big. Um, and then I decided I was going to do a summit uh, after going to the Bulletproof conference and having the meetup running in London for a while. I was going to partner with um, um, another summit over in Finland, the Biohacker Summit guys, but their, their biohacking definition is slightly different to mine. So I thought I'd go to it alone. And I initially thought I'd do four or 500 people or something like that. But because my network had grown so big and I've made so many friends in this space, not for any strategic me- reasons, just because I really enjoy the people and getting to know you know, some of these guys has been amazing. Um, it just kind of grew and grew and grew. And then when Bulletproof Upgrade Labs offered to invest, it kind of turbocharged it somewhat and then also gave me bigger balls to go off and reach out to bigger speakers as well. Um, so it kind of grew and grew and grew from there, really. So, you know, if people are looking to attend this, like I, I should imagine, because I've seen your list of speakers, mm-hmm. like are they going to be on several stages or on the one yeah. stage? Because it's going to be so hard. It's like, you know, if you go to a music festival yeah. and there's either two DJs or two bands that you really want to see, but they're playing at the same time, it's going to be pretty tough. So, yep, I'm very quantified and data driven. So number one, yes, I've gone and smashed the list like a motherfucker, excuse my French. I have gone after the best people I can get in all of the categories and I've gone and putting all the best minds in one place. There are in three categories, mind, body and environment, um, from neurofeedback to gut health to you know red light, um, light therapy and all these different things. I've tried, to la- I've tried to lay out the schedule so that there's one of each at each time. So people that are in the body comp can go and see Ben Pikulski and then go and see a movement class opposed to you know, two things that overlap where they'd be like, ah, which one do I go to? So that's one piece. The other thing is, is that we are recording the main stage. So there'll be videos available of keynotes and main stage people, but also auditory recordings of stage one and two, the additional stages, there's three stages. Um, So it's a a curated experience all around health optimization and there's something for everyone, several things for everyone, including the brands, the exhibitors and the speakers. Um, so it's been, I've been cognizant of all of it from all of angles to say, well, actually, what would it be like for me if I was there and I was a bodybuilder or if I'm there to optimize my health or if I'm there to see someone about circadian rhythms or this, that, the other. So I've done the best I can with the two days that we've got to cram as much in. And it's pretty, it's probably been one of the harder jobs actually to put the schedule together so that everyone is happy. But the point is people are going to be happy because they are the great minds in one place and they'd be able to meet them if they're a VIP. Um, the VIP dinner has VIPs and speakers only there's only 65 tickets which are nearly sold out already Um, and then uh, general admission well the speakers will be walking around and all the cool brands and and you you are pretty much providing a life-changing experience really you know it's it's very rare that you're gonna get all these speakers in one place uh, once in a lifetime, well, for the first of a lifetime to have them all here in London. Mm. So it's going to be pretty phenomenal for people to walk through that door mm. and leave with that much knowledge mm. and maybe a lot of gifts that they've got themselves yeah. from the, all the exhibitors mm. to, you know, to biohack their lives. Well, I mean, I think one thing is, is that it's the first time it's happened in England. So if you see all these conferences going on in America and see all your friends and colleagues all in one place, the community like and you go I wish I could have gone to that well it's right here on your doorstep that's number one two these minds have never been brought together like Dave Asprey is speaking um, alongside other people he's never spoken to on stage before and I've tried to curate it so we've got all minds from each of these angles Um, so that's that's another thing Um, also it's yeah it's the first time it's happening and it's going to be it is going to be game changing which is why Bulletproof Upgrade paleo effects are all on board because they're going actually we believe this is you know something awesome let's do it and so that's why i've got their full support so, yeah yeah that's phenomenal um i mean we're, we're hoping to have around 100 influencers in the building as well <clears throat> so that we obviously have the influencers that are talking about the products and the exhibitors there that they're getting their stuff to help talk about it the exhibitors are then happy the influencers are then happy because they're getting stuff and then it's a really 
like noisy, great event with all the best people in one place. You know, Ben Pankowski can get to know some of these people, like uh, Alexander Wunsch, who is the light, the light healing guy, and like he's the main science guy behind the red lights and all mm. these things. Um, yeah. Um, it's going to be full on. Mm. So what are the dates and the times and how can people get their tickets for this so event? So the website is summit.healthoptimization.com and the agenda is now live so you can have a look through that. The It's 13th, uh, 13th evening for dinner for the VIP and speakers, 14th and 15th weekend at Olympia London. Um, yeah, so there's 50 exhibitors, 40 speakers, two days, workshops, Daryl Edwards, whose movement is a medicine, which is all the science behind movement and how the immune system improves, is doing workshop. We've got Richie Bostock, who's the breathing guy, the breath guy, work guy from London, um, as well as many other people for workshops as well. So it's an interactive experience, not just a conference where you go and listen to talks all day. It's like workshops and exhibitors and community as well. Will there be any classes as well? So for yeah, instance, yeah, the yeah, so the workshops would be okay. We'll do a class of like, uh, meditation, box yep. breathing, yeah, etc. Yeah. yeah, so we've got um, in meditation space, we've got Shaman Durek from America. So he's a, a well known guy that talks about where spirituality meets science. Actually, it's a really interesting take on it, uh, and that's in meditation. We've got breathwork sessions as well, Wim Hof style, um, and um, movement classes. We're just working on some acro yoga to come in as well. I mean, there's a whole host of things. We've, tried, we've looked at it from every angle, from like all the different perspectives of all the people in this space. And so it's a really expanding community. Really, really expanding awesome. community, yeah. You, you're going to have any, like, ayahuasca journeys backstage or anything like that? <laughs> Bring some shamans over? I don't know what that's... I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Well, awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming over here today, Tim. And, and we will put all the links in the show notes and all the information so people can purchase their tickets if you're not there you're crazy by missing out this was a once in a lifetime opportunity guys so please make sure you check the show notes thank you very much appreciate it until next time that is the knowledge and mileage podcast